Well, here we go again. The next platform we're going to cover for the ICE installation using the ZTP process is Microsoft's Hyper-V server. If you haven't already watched the video on how to create the ZTP image file, click here to watch it now. As you can see in this table, the default process of using the ICE ISO and ZTP IMG file is not supported on Hyper-V. This comes down to two reasons. Generation 2 virtual machines do not allow for a floppy to be connected. While Generation 1 virtual machines do, the only format they accept is the VFD format. When creating the ZTP configuration file, I created a .img file as well as a .iso and .vfd file just for Hyper-V. Neither VM generation allows the mapping of a .img file to a DVD drive. I'll show all of this when I install the VM. I've stated in the previous videos that the boot system firmware needs to be BIOS and not UEFI for the ZTP process to work. While you can install ICE on a UEFI based boot system, you cannot use a ZTP process. This is the reason for choosing the Generation 1 virtual machine in Hyper-V. Go to the lab and into our Hyper-V server. I'm going to show you what to expect, including the errors you'll see, if you use a different method than what I am showing. First, let's create a new VM. Give it a name, and then choose Generation 2 virtual machine. Set your memory allocation and choose your network. On this screen, you can specify the size of the hard drive, but we're going to skip that in this VM. On this next screen, we can choose an ISO file to mount to the DVD drive that will be automatically created. Choose Next and then Finish, and Hyper-V will create the virtual machine. Once the virtual machine is created, click the Settings button, choose the processor entry, and increase the virtual processor number to 4. Then go to the SCSI controller and add a DVD drive. From here, if we map an image file, you can see that the only options available to us is an ISO. We cannot map an IMG file, so I choose the ISO file. Once selected, click OK to save the virtual machine settings. Then click the Connect button to open the virtual machine console. Once opened, we can simply press the Start button in the middle of the screen. Once the VM boots, you can see that we get an error stating that the ZTP ISO file is either corrupted or unreadable. Install ICE by itself without ZTP. Go back into the settings, go to the DVD drive, and unmap the ZTP configuration ISO file. Once that is saved, power on the virtual machine. This sequence happens pretty quickly, but as you can see, it boots straight past the ISO file into the EFI shell. Power off the VM, and let's find out why we couldn't boot to the ISO. If we look at our security settings, we can see that secure boot is enabled by default. Let's disable that and power the machine back on. We can see that now that we don't have secure boot enabled, we can boot to the ISO and install ICE. But if we can install ICE this way, let's see if we can do the ZTP process. So go back into the settings, map the ZTP configuration file to your secondary DVD drive, and then boot the machine back up. As you can see, it's not secure boot that was the issue, it's the ZTP configuration file itself. Now we can delete this virtual machine and start by creating a new generation one virtual machine. You know the deal. Choose new virtual machine and give it a name. This time we're going to make sure that generation 1 is selected. I'm only adding 8 gig of RAM to this VM and you'll see why in a moment. Choose the same network that we chose before and then on this next screen we're going to specify the size of the hard drive at 300 gigabytes. Map the ICE installation file to the CD drive. As you can see here we have more options with the legacy hardware. Then once that's done, we click finish. The virtual machine is created. And then we can go into the settings to adjust our hardware. We're gonna go back to the processor and increase that to four virtual processors. Now we're gonna choose the new option of diskette drive. Here's where we're going to map the virtual floppy drive file that we created to this new hardware. Once we click OK, we can connect it to open the VM console. And once it's open, we can power on the virtual machine. I'm going to move it out of the way over here. And once it powers on, we can see that we default to the installation menu. Again, if we wait 150 seconds, it will automatically boot to the ZTP process. And while we're waiting for that, we're going to create another virtual machine. This VM will have all the same settings as the one we just powered on. 
once the virtual machine is created we're going to go into settings increase the virtual cores to four and instead of mapping a virtual floppy drive we're going to create a secondary dvd and map the gtp configuration iso to that and now we can connect to this vm console once this console comes up we're going to move this out of the way so that we can see both consoles at the same time and if you keep an eye on the uptime you can see that once the first VM console reaches two and a half minutes of uptime or 150 seconds, the installation automatically starts. Now we can power on our second VM that has the ISO configuration file mapped to it. Same thing, once the uptime on this virtual machine reaches two and a half minutes, the installation will automatically start. The ZTP installation process can only be monitored through the serial console. So using the virtual machine consoles is not going to show you a lot of information. After about 45 minutes or so, your virtual machine should reboot and you'll see the setup process with the ZTP configuration having already filled in the information needed. Look at the Hyper-V window and you can see the CPU usage from our first virtual machine is still stuck at 0% while its uptime is over an hour at this point. Right here you can see the symbolic link that is created to connect to the repository that was configured in the ZTP configuration script and download the patches we requested. Once the patches are downloaded and installed, the VM will reboot. Once the VM does restart, you can log in and start to verify the settings. The first command we'll use to verify these settings is show running config, otherwise known as the show run command. Here you can see everything that you pre-populated in the ZTP configuration file. Now we're going to use the command show version history. The great thing about this command is not only does it show the patch that is installed, but it will show the hot patches installed as well. You can see these both in the red squares. You can use the command show version to show the patch installed as well. The issue that I have with this command though is that it does not show any hot patches, so I always use a show version which history will let command. us know when we can log Next into we the run the show application status We're for the application command. server this way we process can the to be in the running that state. Are initializing and running. As you can see here, after initially running the show application status ice command, the application server is in the not running state. It will be the last process that will actually change into running. Now I think it's time to go ahead and power off and close the console window for this other VM. Once the application server process is running, we can open up our web browser and point it to the IP address so that we can log into the ICE web GUI. When you get the certificate error, go ahead and click the advanced button, then click the proceed link so that you can get to the interface. Once the interface comes up, log in with the credentials that you set in the setup script. After you bypass these dialogs, you want to click on the gear in the top right corner of the interface and then you're going to choose about ice and server here you can verify that patch one is installed so this is your gui verification of the patch from there we're going to navigate to administration system settings choose api settings and the api service settings tab here you can see both the ers and open api services have been enabled lastly we'll go to administration system deployment we're going to get rid of this dialog here. Then we're going to click on the host name of the ICE server. Once we're inside and see all the services, we're going to scroll all the way down and see that PS Grid and PS Grid Cloud are both enabled. And there you have it. That's the whole ZTP process with Hyper-V Server. Thank you for sticking through to the end. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe and follow me for additional videos on this topic and anything else related to ICE. If you have any suggestions, go ahead and put them in the comments down below. Thank you very much.